Glad that you are with us. Grayson Grunhafer, 365 Sports recruiting uh, coordinator, literally, and then also a uh, football analyst joins us on 365 Sports. Grayson, thank you very much for your time. So this is that time of the year where you have people coming in, uh, people who are still interested. Can Baylor come out of this weekend with anybody new committed to 2025? I think there's a really good chance that they're going to leave this weekend with, um, you know, another commit potentially. I, I will also say I'm anticipating that they're going to get a commitment um, while we're actually talking um, because I think that's going that news will probably drop around four. Or so uh, we might be able to talk about that here coming up. But yeah, you know, Baylor's done a really good job so far during these official visits. They're up to 10 total commits right now. Um, I'm expecting them to get closer to. Uh, 15, 16, I know, I think when we initially talked, I was saying, you know, if they could get 10 commits, you know, kind of during this stretch, and that means kind of the beginning of July, um, those, that first week in July, if they can have 10 from the beginning of June till that time, um, that would be a heck of a run. And I know they lost the commitment from Cash Courtney, so that number's come down a little bit, but I still think if they can get into that 15 to 17 range of total commits going into um, you know, the month, a little bit later in July, I think they'll be in a great spot. So right now they're, they're doing really good, and, and I anticipate they're going to have some more momentum over the next couple of weeks. All right, did you say you might there might be somebody like in the next five or ten minutes that you might have a commitment? Yeah, yeah, I think I think Baylor should begin the commitment here in the next five minutes. Um, so we'll talk about that if, if indeed it does happen while we're talking. But like I said, there, okay. there's momentum going on here, and, and they've had a lot of official visitors who are still – yet to make, you know, decisions. And it's kind of been interesting. A, a lot of guys kind of during this time period have decided to, you know, kind of have a, a deadline, right? So they have a date that they're going to make a decision. And most guys have kind of stuck to that. And they wanted to take their other official visits and then um, wanted to commit on that specific date. So I think that's why you're seeing more guys, you know, coming off the official visit, and not necessarily committing right after the weekend, um, but instead kind of waiting till the end of June and the early July to make that official decision. Is the Shadow Creek wide receiver Ashton Jones the class of those who are visiting this weekend? Uh, I mean, so he's committed. Um, yeah. So he's definitely, I think, the one that, you know, a lot of people are going to be, you know, talking about because he is actually the longest commit in the class now um, because they've had so much, you know, kind of movement there. But I would say – you know, they got a couple of really interesting guys. They have three offensive linemen who are visiting, and that's an area where they're just completely depleted right now as far as in this class. They don't have a single commit on the offensive line. Um, big reason for that is, you know, over the past six months, they've had three offensive line coaches. Um, so they've really had to kind of revamp things there. So that's been a focus. But I think if you're kind of looking for the headliner, um, I'd probably say that that's probably the Caney wide receiver to New Kind. Um, he's a national four-star recruit. Um, took official visits to Texas, Notre Dame, USC, and now Baylor. I, I think that's pretty much his top four. Um, and he's nearing his decision here at the beginning of July as well. I think it'll be the second or the third um, when he makes his decision. And then also kind of a sneaky one is Oaks Christian tight end Stevie Amar. Um, you might be familiar with uh, Oaks Christian because that's actually oh, yeah. where uh, Baylor quarterback Nate Bennett um, was from. Um, so they're, they were teammates last year. Um, when Stevie Amar kind of had his breakout season and then Baylor kind of went back to the well and offered him um, in the spring and had been recruiting him as the, the tight end for this class. They really want him to be that guy. I'm um, a very versatile athlete, a really good pass catcher, and a, one of those guys that did not fit in the old offense but is a perfect fit in the spread offense as kind of a, a slot wide receiver, tight end, hybrid type. All right, I saw where Demetrius Dean of Jasper is is on this weekend. I still believe being a part of the, the visit this weekend. He's committed to the University of Houston. Now, Grayson, I know that any fan base remembers those who got away that were committed to them, and there's always going to be that. And Baylor has their fair share, maybe in, in some cases quite a bit. How often do they ever flip somebody else? Yeah, I mean, it happens. Um, you know, he's actually one that is still kind of a wait and see on if he'll actually end up on campus this weekend. Um, he's one that I've, I've mentioned a couple times. He's been scheduled mm -hmm. to visit for a while, but we'll see if it actually happens. Because uh, like you said, he committed to Houston right after his visit. Um, he's been in talks with the Baylor you know, staff for a, for a while now. Um, 
but it, it's still a wait and see. I haven't seen that he's gotten to campus quite yet, so it's one of those things where we're just waiting and see what happens. Um, Baylor's done a pretty good job. You know, they flipped some guys here and there. I would say they've probably, you know, lost more of those flips than they've won in recent years, especially kind of those high-profile ones when you're talking about Adam Schobel and Austin Novosad. Those are kind of ones that stand out. Um, but they have flipped some guys. You know, when you look at Mason Dossett, um, kind of being a, a big one um, in the previous class. So, yeah, they, they've had their fair share of moments as well. All right, so Jacoby Walter and Eve Missy uh, will be drafted most likely early next week. And Jacoby's and, – and and actually, Eve's is both they're, – they're in the green room. I, it looks to me as if Jacoby was kind of at a certain number when they first came out with a lot of the projections. There are different people that do that. But that he seems to have moved up a tick or three or four. Is that right? That's what I've been hearing. I actually, you know, have a contact in San Antonio who, um, you know, obviously is covering the draft really extensively. Um, and the big thing for him is kind of, you know, the Spurs, right? He follows the Spurs. The Spurs have two top eight picks. And so for that reason, I do trust a lot of what he's hearing. And actually, he made a tweet yesterday mentioning that Jacoby Walter could be a surprise top five pick. And I, I was shocked by that because I, I truly don't think he's going to go that high. But if you look at it, he's had workouts with the Spurs and the Pistons, who are both in the top five. Um, I think he's probably going to slide to somewhere between 10 to 14. Um, but I will say there, is, there appears to be some momentum there. And then as far as Eve Nisi goes, I think there's an outside chance that he gets drafted in the lottery. Um, it's possible, especially after what you know Derek Lively just did uh, for the Mavs and how a guy like that can change things for you. Um, but I, I kind of think he'll probably be drafted more so in the late teens, maybe early 20s. I just got a note because you're the one that puts this out about a commitment. Do you want to go ahead and give us that information? Yeah, yeah. So Byron Nelson, uh, cornerback Leo Almanza, four star, or a three-star prospect actually in the uh, 2025 class, he did just commit. Um, he was the guy that I was kind of alluding to that was going to make his decision here at four. Um, yeah, really good prospect, a cornerback prospect, the first one to commit for Baylor in this class at that position. Um, we know the success that Kevin Curtis has had developing that position. When you look at guys like Caden Jenkins and Carl Williams, how good they did as true freshmen. Um, and now, you know, turning the, the table here to this class, and Lou Almanza was the Texas 4 6 a utility player of the year. He had four interceptions on defense, but then he also had 518 yards and nine touchdowns on offense. So, um, he's the kind of player that really, really fits what they're looking for as a guy who's actually a playmaker at the cornerback position. And so, yeah, it's a really nice fit. And it's a head-to-head win for Baylor over Kansas State, Utah, and Houston. What were your thoughts about the Bob Simpson gift, the $10 million? It's mainly men's basketball, which I think he's been doing some of that. But also Mitch Thompson is going to join us today at 530, getting some of that, it looks like, some of that money too with NIL and baseball. That's huge. I mean, I don't know how many times that, you know, Craig and I have talked about baseball on the Bearcats this year, and almost all of it was, you know, either it was negative about how the season was going or negative about them losing a key player to the transfer portal. And I just think, you know, there there is a place for NIL to work in baseball, and I think Baylor definitely needs to be able to um, – you know, kind of harness that a little bit more. I mean, you're seeing, you know, schools across the country that have really invested in it, like the SEC, which I don't, Baylor's not going to ever be on that level of investment. But I do think they can invest enough to where they can keep their own and still go out and bring in some talented players to try to turn that program around. Because I mean, it's been a really, really rough past two years for that program. And they definitely need um, to turn the tide a little bit, and hopefully this gives them some momentum going into next year. Yep, I, I, I think so. We'll hear from Mitch at 530. I know it's got to be a relief for him. And I I said this earlier, uh, uh, Grayson, that, you know, Bob Thompson kind of went into the background after the uh, controversy in 2016 with the coaching change with Art and all that because he was a huge, huge uh, friend and also a supporter of Art Bryles. And I thought that when he disappeared, you wondered – when he would come back. And he's one of the, like, founders of that stadium, McLean Stadium. But it's nice to see him that he's not completely gone. I think he's been doing some things with men's basketball. I asked if we could get him on. We haven't yet. But I think that's also good to see him getting himself back together. Not football, but at least doing something with a couple of sports. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, anytime you're able to get donors, you know, to, to reinvest into the program and really um, make it a priority, it's huge. I mean, that that's simply put, that's how you're going to get to the point where you are your most successful is when all of your alumni are completely bought into the program. And, uh, and nowadays, it's more important than ever to you know, do so with the resources that you're able to, um, because it's all about trying to keep up with, you know, the other top schools in the country and try to close the gap um, money-wise, because frankly, that that does seem to be what it's all about now. Thank you very much, Grayson. Have a great weekend. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com.